Hey, hey, everybody. I told you I was going to come on tonight and share with you my tips for why you need to be on a routine when it comes to meal planning and how healthy eating is really only uh, possible as a busy mom if you have a routine. First of all, the cost of eating healthy can be high. It can be unaffordable for anyone, really. It really depends on where you live and your values. For us, we like to eat organic, of course, or at least without pesticides. And we also like to eat grass-fed meat when we do eat meat. And we look for things that are naturally uh, working out. You know, they're running around in free, free range. Now, do know that there are quite a few brands of of animal products that claim to be free range or um, free roaming. And the truth is the government allows them to claim that when they really don't get total free access to grass and, and exercise and things like that. And you could actually tell by the quality of the meat. Now, some of you might find uh, truly free range turkeys and chickens to be, what's the word for not palatable? impalatable. I don't know if that's a word, but I'm going to say uh, they're not as palatable for some if you're not used to it because they're highly muscular because of all the extra exercise that they get. And that's kind of how you know uh, that a bird has had all the exercise that it naturally would have is because it's kind of leaner, sometimes a little tougher, and the, and the flavor is a little bit stronger, kind of like a gamey, gamier meat, if, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, the cost of eating can be really high. But statistics show that the more often you go to the store, the more you spend because of impulse buys, which I know you know what I'm talking about. And I know that if you have kids in the cart with you, it's even worse because they're reaching for things. And sometimes you just give in because you need to get through the shopping trip, right? So you can um, also avoid spending too much money by not going to the, the store hungry uh, you can't, your kids are always hungry if you're at the store and you just know that's going to happen. But you don't want to be hungry when you go to the store because you'll be more likely to say yes to impulse buys as well. But putting thought into what you're going to feed your family means you'll also be putting thought into your grocery shopping list and the spending that you're planning to do. And meal planning can work for any bu budget because you're going to decide uh, what you want to have on a weekly basis. So if you're someone who has a, a set a spending limit each each week for your groceries, you probably don't want to put something like lobster and scallops and salmon on the same week of your meal plan. Now, if you like to have high quality seafood throughout your diet, then maybe you plan for that and you put it into your, into your routine once a month and then you try to supplement the rest of your weeks with more affordable cuts of meat or uh, lower qual uh, lower costing proteins like legumes and, and beans and even grains like quinoa and things like that. Now, meal planning can work for every budget because of that, because you're also not winging it for dinner, which can be more costly because you're buying the prepackaged pasta sauce and you're buying the noodles and things like that. But I don't know many families who don't have at least one night per week where cooking a meal or even putting a frozen pizza in the oven could be really daunting. I know there's times when we don't even have time for that if we have too many basketball games in an evening. And dining out on those nights sounds way more appealing but what if your dinner was already thought out ahead of time? Like what if you put it in the crock pot in the morning or the Instapot and you were just ready to take it out of the container and eat it? Or maybe you prepared it where it's on the go and in little meal containers, like thermos containers, so you could take it on the go. That sounds like a pipe dream, but it's actually something that happens for our family on a pretty regular basis because I do think about those things when I make my meal plan. I put a specific meal that fits our time budget for that night, like if we have a soccer game late in the evening or things like that. But now having a meal plan means purposely buying groceries from a prepared shopping list because you know exactly what you need. Now most Americans waste about 40% of the food that they purchase every single week. So that means that for every five bags of food you buy, two of them you're going to end up tossing in the trash 52 times a year. Okay, think about that. That adds up really quickly, especially if eating healthy is something that stretches your budget a, a bit where it's a little bit uncomfortable and it's a challenge for you. If you're throwing out four, uh, two of those bags every single time you buy five bags. So if every five bags you buy, you throw away two, that is a lot of money you're throwing away, especially if you're buying higher quality food, that's expensive. 
And you won't do that if you're creating a meal plan and only buying the food that you need for that meal plan. Now, not, meat, not meal planning makes a healthy diet a huge challenge. Simply having a meal plan will improve your diet in a multitude of ways. Your plan will incorporate fresh foods instead of prepackaged meals that are naturally just lower in quality than things that are homemade. They're also higher in sodium. Even the organic foods that are prepackaged and ready to go, they are higher in sodium. And some of them, whether they're organic or not, are going to have preservatives and some of those packaged foods will have unhealthy fats. And I have to tell you that things like safflower oil and sunflower oil, those are not ideal oils. So even though you see them quite often in organic foods, those are not ideal oils at all. So you're basically paying more money for something that may ultimately add to the inflammation in your body. Now, lower quality food is generally less sati satiating, which means you'll be hungry sooner. And you do have total control over what you're eating, so you can focus on whatever dietary needs you or your family has when you're creating that meal plan. Now, for my family, like I said, we prioritize eating healthy food, organic, and things like that. We also look for things that are in season because they're going to be more affordable, especially where we live here in the South. Uh, it's it's um, something about the, the, the transportation routes. It just it does not lend itself easily to getting fresh food brought in. I mean, we've had a food co-op before where they brought the food from Colorado all the way down here to Louisiana, which is crazy because why would you have to spend money to ship food on a truck? From Colorado to Louisiana there's no place in between here and there that would actually bring the food all the way to Louisiana just so we could get something that's chemical free that's not sustainable and we try really hard not to do that anymore so I drive an hour down to the city to go to things like Trader Joe's and Costco so we can get high quality organic fresh food that we aren't um, specifically hiring a truck driver to bring all the way down here to our state it's kind of crazy right um, now, having that meal plan allows me to eat in season, and we can also choose those humanely raised meats and also avoiding chemicals and pesticides. And now local produce used to be a big thing for me. Like we tried really hard to do that in North Carolina and Washington state. We would really uh, hit, the, hit up the farmer's markets and things like that. That's just not something that my family and I uh, feel good about doing down here, simply because the, the soil, the crops haven't been uh, pesticide free long enough and it's just kind of a given. They have to spray for mosquitoes here, aerial spraying, things like that. So I just, uh, I, I'm sure there are all kinds of little over sprays on the organic food that I buy too, but I, I'm not aware of it. I am very much aware of what goes on here in the state that I live in. So I just, we don't buy local the way that we should. But if you can, I do really believe in, in buying local and supporting the farms near you. Now, if you commit to meal planning, it isn't very likely that you would plan to go to the store and then buy some box macaroni and cheese, like some white bread and I don't know, lunch meat, unless that's really what's on your meal plan. But instead, you're going to be focusing more on those whole food items that fit within your budget and that fit the recipes that you've chosen for the week. And then once you've purchased this beautiful, fresh, high quality food, I doubt you're going to want to watch it spoil and you'll have no choice but to stick to your plan and prepare those foods and eat them, right? So... Meal planning is kind of like having your own accountability coach. Now, here's the other thing. Not having a meal plan increases anxiety. It's It happens for me. I know it'll happen for you. Now, some people believe that they hate cooking, and I used to be that person until I discovered cooking fresh foods that are actually in season. The flavor is worth it to me, and so I really appreciate it. And then when food tastes amazing, I'm way more excited to cook it. I mean, who wouldn't be? And I guarantee that after a few months of cooking from scratch, the packaged store-bought meals that you once loved will taste far less fantastic. It's so funny. Um, ragu pasta sauce used to be my favorite, and I used to be kind of a snob about it. I can't even, it, it, it just doesn't, has no flavor to me now. And instant oatmeal has completely lost its appeal after making uh, overnight oats for the past almost 10 years. And those were staples in my kitchen not just in college, but after as well, you know, after as I was an adult with children. But having a meal plan for your, having a plan for your meals doesn't mean that you have to eat the same thing day after day, week after week. This type of routine is an easy one that many families aren't utilizing, uh, just creating kind of a rotational plan uh, because it does reduce your stress to have something that's predictable 
And you can throw in some new recipes to eat within the seasons. And variety is definitely the spice of life when it comes to food. So you don't have to have a different recipe every single night or every single lunch or whatever, but you can at least uh, have a set plan that you maybe rotate. Some families like to have like 10 or 15 recipes on rotation. I personally like to eat with the seasons, so we might have you know, the same six or seven meals that are kind of sprinkled in and then we have our staples, right? Like we have tacos quite often. We might have, um, we do a potato soup pretty often, things like that. But one of the most important factors of meal planning is the plan it and forget it phenomena that occurs. I plug in my recipes, I compare it with my inventory sheets, I make a grocery list and I bring the food home. Once the food's in my house, I really don't think about it anymore. I know I can trust the meal planning formula to, pr to only provide a meal for me that I have the time to prepare, right? Like I was talking about with soccer and things. So I know that it's in season, so I'm getting the most nutrients I can possibly get. I know that my meals are gonna contain only the ingredients my family wants to eat. And then how many times do you go to the grocery store with the partial list and you still stand around looking blankly at the, the shelves of food and wondering like, what am I hungry for? And that's too many times, too many times we do that. So this is where you can create the meal plan with those things that you like on them and making sure that your cravings are attended to as well as things that your kids like. I like to make my kids a meal at least once a week that is their favorite. So I know that they're eating something really good for them that they like, you know, cause my kids are kind of picky. I mean, who's aren't? But not having a meal plan can create a hangry family because your meal plans incorporating those seasonal food items and the variety, your family's less likely to get sick of the food you're making. And I can't promise you, you know, again, like I said, I have, I have picky kids. I can't promise you that they're not still going to be picky. My husband's usually the picky one, to be honest. But I can assure you that you can kind of get rid of those complaints with the, well, this is what's for dinner tonight. And it's not what we're having every single night. You can have it one night. Now, my family does get to rate the meals as long as they do it politely. We use a thumb, thumbs up or thumbs down rating method. So like words, you know, you, they can't say gross or disgusting. They can't say they hate it. Those things aren't allowed, but they can go ahead and say like thumbs up, they like it, medium, like no, I'll eat it tonight, but I don't think you should make it again. And like thumbs down, please don't make me eat this again. But knowing that your meals are planned out and your shopping list is complete means you don't have to stress about feeding your family and they're not going to get overly hungry because you didn't have to run to the store to get the food to come home and prepare it. Now, preparing the meals that you're following a recipe for, which is what I do. I, I am not someone who can just put together a recipe at all. Now, um, it's gonna free up your mind because you're not thinking about that, figuring out how to cook and what to cook. It's already laid out for you. And then your family is gonna quickly notice how much happier you are when you're preparing the meals. I mean, how many of you have prepared dinner and you weren't someone that your kids should talk to while you were cooking? Um, that's me sometimes, especially breakfast. If I am out of things and it's just um, at the end of our meal planning for the week and I'm kind of at the garbage night, if you haven't heard me talk about garbage night or garbage day, it's basically where we're eating things out of the fridge to free up space and get ready to go grocery shopping. Now, sometimes breakfast can be a little wild. I'm not always fun to talk to because I'm trying to hurry up and get the kids fed because they're already getting agitated because they're kind of overly hungry that's not good. Thankfully, this only happens to me a couple times a month when we're at that spot. Otherwise, I am pretty sure that's the norm across America, across the globe probably, when people aren't on a meal plan because their family's hungry, they just can't wait anymore, and um, it's stressful. It's just not any way to be. Now, I rarely flub up my meal plan, but when I do, my family can tell immediately. And so like I have the I have the anxiety about it. I know um, I didn't prepare or I didn't thaw something or I planned a dinner that takes longer than we have time to fix. And so they're probably hungry and then things go poorly. So I can avoid that by always, you know, sticking to the plan and trying not to let things interfere with it. And also having an emergency meal in the freezer that you can just pull out and heat up whenever things like that happen. Now, here's another bonus to having a meal plan. You can have someone over for dinner unexpectedly because you've planned out your meals and so you kind of know that you'll have food to cook, right? You're not just like, oh, well, hmm, we didn't even know what we're gonna eat for dinner tonight, so how could I invite this person to stay? 
now you don't have to do that. You know, like back in those old movies, the women would just invite people to stay for dinner like moments before their dinner was coming out of the oven. Like, don't you wish you could do that? I actually feel like I can do that most nights of the week as long as we're not on our way to soccer, right? So how does she have enough food to offer? Well, she probably has a meal plan or she sticks to the same basic meals that feed enough people. And that's kind of what we do too. But they also were making fresher foods back then that were more balanced. So it was just part of a life to serve up meat and potatoes paired with a dessert and bread that was super delicious. That was just part of the way that they, they carried out their life. But women today no longer feel the pressure to make a meal like that for the man in the house, you know, thanks, but thanks to having a meal plan, you kind of can't do that. You can go back to that Martha Stewart style, what is it, June Cleaver, Leave it to Beaver type lifestyle. You really can go back to that and it's not so bad. Now, here's, a, here's another thing, like not meal planning, it will eat into your time. So you can have health benefits, you can save money, but you can most importantly save time. Okay, from grocery shopping to cooking, meal planning is gonna save you time. I can absolutely guarantee it. Now having a weekly plan means shopping one time and maybe you break up your produce purchases. I know um, in the summer I have to go get salad greens and things like that twice a week because um, they'll wilt and things like that. But otherwise, you don't have to go to the store for a big grocery shop only once a week. And then I try to avoid going to the store, if at all possible, because it saves me time and it keeps me from buying things that I don't really need. Now, the other thing that meal planning provides in the way of time is you're just efficient. So like if your family loves tacos, you can plan ahead and make a double batch or triple batch of the taco stuffing and just freeze it for later in the week. And then if you're already making up a batch of breakfast muffins, there's not much effort to just double the recipe and store one batch in the freezer. Making a meal, meal for someone who's just had a baby or like they're under the weather and you just wanna help them, you can double some of your best recipes that you know can freeze well, and then you can just give them a meal straight out of your freezer or that's there for you as an emergency if something goes wrong in your schedule. Now, if you already have frozen meals or soups that you double batch, like this is something that you might wanna consider adding to your meal plan every single week so you have something that's going into the freezer. Um, so I'm actually one of the first people to sign up on a meal train when they come out anymore because I have this kind of routine going on. And uh, I know that the food that I've cooked is typically allergen friendly. You know, a lot of people, especially after they have a baby, they wanna avoid certain things like spices because they think that it's going to cause gas in the baby, which is totally not true. But still, most of these recipes are, you know, really benign and easy to just deliver to someone. So. It's another thing to take off that anxiety when you think about hosting and, and providing food to others. So I hope these tips have kind of helped you understand that there are so many more benefits to meal planning than just simply the act of meal planning. So I'm wondering, you know, are you gonna become the next Martha Stewart by creating a meal plan? I don't know about that. I'm still not there. Uh, I can't throw together a beautifully plated meal yet and wear like a pressed outfit. But I do know that my family is able to eat healthy on a budget and with very little stress. So I hope this was helpful and I have so many other meal planning resources. All you have to do is go to crunchysupermom.com and type in healthy eating in the search box and all of them will pop up. So I hope this is helpful.